I had a delightful childhood. Um, and faith was a huge part of our lives. I mean, we went to church twice every Sunday in Sunday school and catechism. And, and uh, I also went to Christian day schools and Christian high school and then on to a Christian college. And uh, so faith was a vital, integral part of, of my life. And already in high school, I started thinking about becoming a pastor. I wanted to be able to share my faith with other people and help them on their faith journeys. But then early in my time at Calvin College here in Grand Rapids, I started being honest with myself about the fact that I was attracted to other guys. Now at that point, nobody was talking about same-sex attraction, about people being gay. There were the occasional snide comments or, mar or you know, remarks, put down jokes, but nothing with any kind of understanding or compassion or justice uh, concern whatsoever. And so I literally thought it was the worst possible thing that could be true of me. Uh, to, to be attracted to other guys and so I prayed constantly that God would change me. Uh, at the time I thought of it in terms of healing, that God would want to heal me of this like disease or affliction or whatever it was, some sort of like a mental illness or something is the way I framed it. So I prayed constantly that God would change me and I tried to stop being attracted to the guys and start being attracted to the girls and well the more I prayed the more I noticed the good looking guys on campus. And um, at the time, I mean, I can kind of smile at that now, but at the time, it threw me into a downward spiral of depression. I, I was a wreck for years. I felt really depressed, really lonely, a lot of anxiety, fear. I mean, I didn't dare tell anybody about what was going on inside of me because I feared rejection, because I saw no place of any kind of acceptance in, in the community that I was part of. I continued to plead with God to bring me out of, out of this situation. Um, well, eventually, I started reaching out to other people, and I, I was trying to find a way out of this, this really, what for me was a very traumatic situation. Uh, so I started telling other people about my being gay, and I started doing some reading. It so happens that back uh, in my last year at, at Calvin College, there was a speaker that came to campus. Um, she happened to be Virginia Mullencott. She had the co-author co of the book, Is the Homosexual My Neighbor? And it was the first time I ever heard anybody say anything the slightest bit understanding or compassionate or thoughtful or scholarly about, uh, about the fact that there are gay people and that there are gay Christians. Um, so that began to give me a little hope, like, wow, maybe I don't have to hate myself. Maybe there's another perspective here. There were other Christians who, were, who had a perspective of openness and acceptance. And, and so um, I continued to pursue that because it was so life-giving. And eventually, I really did come to peace with myself. I came to peace with myself and with God. I got to a point in my life where I realized I needed to take another step of coming out. Um, I realized that for me to continue to play what, what I called the hiding game, it was this like, okay, can I tell this person or, or can I not tell this, this person? And that was really stressful. It was really exhausting to live that way. Always being afraid, you know, like, well, what would these people think if they knew? While I was talking with people, I, uh, one of the, the uh, groups of people I was talking with were staff people at Calvin College, where I'd been a student, and uh, they invited me to give a speech on campus. It was part of a larger uh, lecture series on sexuality issues, and they asked if I'd give a speech on homosexuality, and I said, uh, do you realize what you're asking? <laughs> you're asking me to talk about myself, right? And they said, yeah, we know. <laughs> so I said, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm ready. And it really, the timing was just right. I just knew that I was emotionally and spiritually ready to come out publicly for the first time in my life. So I did that in a speech at Calvin College, my alma mater here in Grand, Grand Rapids, the, the official college of the Christian Reformed Church, which is very conservative. And I gave that speech in February of 1992, and it soon hit the news. Um, because this was very rare. I was the first Christian Reformed minister to ever state publicly that he, he, he was gay, and that was interesting to people, I guess. I did end up um, being well, the official terminology was, I was released from the ministry in the Christian Reformed Church. I feel like I was kicked out. Uh, but, but the reason was that I had come to affirm faithful, loving, committed life partnerships for people who are gay. I, I would say marriage now, but at the time, people weren't using that kind of terminology yet. 
Um, this was in the late 90s. And so that um, because I was doing ministry with gay and lesbian people and I was affirming faithful, loving, committed life partnerships and that, that belief does not coincide with the official policy of the Christian Reformed Church, eventually the church said, no, you cannot be uh, one of our pastors anymore. So it wasn't long before it was not only in the denominational magazine, but also on the front page of the Grand Rapids Press. And uh, so the word was out. And, and I found, when I saw that article on, on the front page of the Grand Rapids Press, I felt this, this sense of ecstasy. It was like this huge burden had been lifted off. And I thought to myself, you know, I couldn't hide anymore now if I wanted to. The hiding game is completely over. And I, I, it, it was really wonderful. I, I, I knew then that the hiding that I'd been doing had been w way too exhausting for way too long. And it was much healthier to just be open and honest and be who I am.